Well, Willie, um, yeah, how are you doing? It's great to have you on the line. And, um, you know, we're, we're very excited to have such a legend who's, uh, who's done five Lions tours. And I read somewhere, I know you've, you've got the record of 17 caps, but you, you actually played 71 games for the Lions. And I had to reread that. I don't know whether that's true, but is that true? Do you play actually 71 times for the Lions? Yes, but you see, Lions tours in the early days, they were about 30-odd games altogether. Right, and you yeah. normally played about half of those. Right. Uh, and the last Lions tour I was on were 22 games. So, you know, there were quite a lot more games. And, and you know, I keep saying there were proper Lions tours in those days. <laughs> I know what you mean by Lions tour. Before we talk about, the, you know, the South Africa um, Lions tour coming up, I just want to go back... Um, to your time though but it, it, interestingly for me I played on one Lions tour and that was 1997 I was blessed to go to South Africa I, I played one game I didn't play a test match but what I found amazing was the camaraderie between teams that would hate each other massively during the five, four nations five nations now six nations and yet able to come together and become friends very quickly. So for you guys, how long did it take you to get out to, say, South Africa by boat? And did you have uh, a couple of drinks on the way? Well, uh, we actually didn't go by boat. I think I, we were the first right, one to okay. flew. And, but it, was, it really was an experience because my first tour was to South Africa in 1962, right. which is nearly 60 yeah. years ago. And, uh, you know, of course, there was no first class or business class or anything like that. We were all one yeah. class. And uh, they didn't fly too much over water in those days. And I remember we, we'd fly from London to Amsterdam and then we'd refuel. And we'd refuel virtually in every city all the <laughs> way down. And I remember living in Rome and then we would fly down the net. And uh, we, it took about a day and a half to get to Nairobi. And we played our first game in Kenya. Unbelievable. Wow. There were different traveling days than they are now. <laughs> but, but what was it, no, what was it like? By boat. No, what was it like bringing bringing those players together from different nations? Because the, the 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 real sorry, I've lost that, I've lost the sound. Yeah, what 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 was it like? Um, sort of joining up with England players, especially coming from Ireland. I mean, that must have been tough. But or was there was there something special about the Lions that brought you all together? Yeah, I think I think that you've hit it there. Uh, you know, in those days, there were 30 players. And, you know, to be one of the 30, one of the best 30, or supposedly one of the best 30 players in the four countries, it was a very special thing. And, of course, it should be today still. Uh, and, you know, when you, went to, when you went on tour, everybody was sort of clambering to say, right, I want to be one of the best. And yeah. you want to get on the fifth side. And, uh, you know, it was a special thing, a really special thing. And I hope it still is. Uh, but you, so, you yeah, that's, that's what it's together because rugby is a team game, as you know. And the only way you're going to survive, the only way you're going to win and do well, is by having a, a team, a team sort of spirit, and you develop that as quickly as you possibly can. Yeah, I remember in the '97 Lions tour when I joined them, when Rob Howley got injured, I got out there and I couldn't believe how friendly all the different players were with each other and me and so welcoming. But having a couple of drinks was all key to that comrade, comradeship. And it wasn't professional in your day. So what was it like? What were the nights out like? I guess, I guess they're, uh, you know, what stays on tour, you know, has to stay on tour. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, you know, it, they were, as you say, they were amateur days. But, you know, it was absolutely crazy. Uh, we went to South Africa in 60, 62. I went to New Zealand in 66, and I went back to South Africa in 68. We had no coach. There was no coach. Wow. They had wow. The, the, this stupid thing of, you know, coaching wasn't a thing. And, you know, we were there to sort of, it, was, it wasn't about winning and losing. It was, you know, about enjoying the game and developing the game and, and sort of spreading the game. And yet we were going to places like South Africa and New Zealand who we were, who was, had been training and prepared for us to come. And, of course, we took a hiding in all those games. Yeah. Uh, so it, it was very satisfying for me to go back in 71 when we had Carolyn James, who was really our first coach, uh, and win and beat New Zealand. And then to go back in 74 to South Africa and beat them, which was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. 
And so was, was it was it a case of just making it up on the on the training pitch as you went along, and a few few players, you know, having a few night few beers the night before, or was it all just random random training and matches? You know, the, the way we played it was that you played Wednesday Saturday, yeah. and uh, well, those that played Wednesday, well, they had a night out on Wednesday. Players who played on Saturday, they had a night out on Saturday, and then you would begin building up for the next week again. But, yeah. You know, we probably it was a lot more nonsense than the professional players get today because the media are very close to it all. We try to get the media to be part of us. And you yeah. know, the, 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 the correspondence, correspondence in those days, I think we only had something like seven in the first, the first tour. And they traveled with us in the bus. It was unbelievable. Uh, and you know, when you see the way the game has developed today, I think yeah. the last time I ever saw the line was 74. I think I went into a press conference and there was something like 40. 40 odd journalists, you know, it was absolutely amazing. Yeah, and I don't know what it's like, it's probably the same today. Oh, it's, well, it's probably hundreds, but I mean, I could just imagine that, that who sung the most songs? Was the Welsh singing the most songs on the bus, or did you did you uh, well, come out with your own tunes? Uh, see, singing, singing was a big part of Lions tours. I don't know about the professor said. So. Oh, it still but, is, yeah, it still is. It sort of brought us together, and everybody did their own little party trick or their own little song and that sort of thing. Or in the bus, they start, somebody started it up and then we would all sing. And it was, singing was a great way of getting people together. And yeah. 74, and for, well, 71, I think, was probably one of the first because we had Carwin and we had a lot of the Welsh. And I suppose they let singing and the rest joined in. But singing was very much part of it. John Taylor, I remember, in 71, was our sort of choir master. And in 74, we had Billy Steele. And funny enough, yeah. the sort of tour song was Flower of Scotland, which was amazing. <laughs> and uh, we used to sing that in the bus on the way to the match, even to the to the test games. It was great. It was absolutely brilliant. And it got the guys <laughs> together. It was terrific. And you shared the Lions jerseys with some of the best players ever to have played the game, the, the likes of, you know, Sir Gareth Edwards and, you know, Mike Gibson and all these players who you know, stand the test of time, you know, Gareth Edwards rated the best player ever to have played the game. And, you know, you played with some incredible players. Well, uh, Karen, I, I tell you, it, it was absolutely brilliant. And one of my proud hosts is in 71, I, I was leading the forwards. And, uh, you know, to play with a back line of Gareth Edwards, Barry John, Mike Gibson, John Dawes, David Duckham, Gerald Davis, and J.P.R. Williams. It wow. was absolutely just, it was brilliant. And I remember saying to Carwin, I had long chats with Carwin, who didn't really know a lot about forward play, but he yeah. loved back play. And he said, we're not going to kick the ball back to the old blacks. We're going to run at them. And he said, all I want you to do is get me the ball. Get us the ball. Get us the ball. He says, I don't care how you get it. Just yeah. get us the ball. And yeah. really, he was right because that's what he did. And, and uh, really everyone... Yeah, I mean, the style of play, I mean, you know, it's funny watching watching some clips of the old Lions rugby and you compare it to the game today. I mean, it, it looks, it's chalk and cheese. It just seems such a different type of rugby. Um, quite violent. I mean, the rooks and the mauls were quite brutal. But, you know, I've heard you talking about, and we've all heard the story of the 99 call in South Africa. You get your... You get you, you get it in first, which everyone loves those stories. But again, I guess you know you know the Lions now go to South Africa, and you saw South Africa win the last World Cup with sheer brutality. But but brutality and physicality are absolutely crucial, aren't they, for for beating any South African team? Well, you know, there, there's a number of things there that I pick up just from what you say. I was absolutely delighted. You know, the, the professional game has just changed the whole face of of our game. Yeah. In so many ways, it's unbelievable. And, you know, I was delighted to see South Africa win, win the last World Cup. And I'll tell you why. They haven't changed the game. And I have always believed that the team who, who scrummages best will usually win the game. And they have never changed that. They based their whole game on the scrummage yeah. and physical. And the other thing is that South Africa was a pure South African team. And, you know, it's one of my sort of things that really makes me grind sometimes. We have all sorts of people from around the world playing for our national teams, and I don't like that. South Africa were a South African team with a South African coach. It was really terrific. I was delighted they won, but they haven't changed the game, and, and it's what 
74, 40 odd years since I played in South Africa, and their game is still the same. And they, they no, it, the England were absolutely lost. They're just good at the physical game. And I, I just wonder next year if I am school in South Africa for seven games, we can rest assured that South Africa will be ready and waiting. And I don't know how you put a team together from four countries, but it's more than four countries now because there's all sorts of people going in the Lions tour. Uh, I don't know how you put a team together and play what, three games, three tests and four other games. I can't see how you put a team together that will take on South Africa. It'll be a tough, tough tour. And it's a tough ask, but you 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 are living proof that you can beat them if you meet fire with fire. And um, I just love some of the stories where it was all. You know, it's funny, Kieran. Uh, you know, it's the only, as far as I'm concerned, it's the only way they understand. And if yeah. you're getting that from, you've got to take it back, and you've got to dominate that. You must dominate mm. that. There's a word probably that's the wrong word, but you know they tend to bully. They tend to bully you physically. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's well, it was the other way around for a change, which was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So when, when Clive yeah. Woodward first started coaching us and we, we went to South Africa and played against South Africa, um, the first thing he put on the, uh, on the wall um, in, the, in the training camp, he put brutality all around the walls. And uh, he basically said, listen, I don't mind losing against South Africans, but I want them to know, I want them to know that they're in a game. I want them to be hurting in the morning. And eff effectively, your strategy that you, you did, you know, 60 odd years ago was a strategy we used. We said, we meet fire with fire. If, if there's anything untoward, it's all in. Everyone's in, even the backs. So it never quite came to that. But I do remember... Um, actually, that was the number one focus for England, trying to beat the South Africans. If you meet the physicality, then you can beat them. And I think with the Lions going out now, when he's choosing his team, he's going to have to pick players who can front up, in a legal sort of way, but who can front up. Yeah, uh, you know, I'll go back to this scrum as you think. Their whole game is based on the scrum. I'm sorry, I'm good at it. We're bad at scrum. You know, I, I watch the, the Premiership clubs playing, I watch own clubs playing here at home. We cannot scrum properly. In 1974, every day, every day, we scrummaged for 20 minutes against each other. We had, we had 16 players, 16 forwards, and uh, we played against each other every day. There was blood pouring at the end of some of our sessions. And when we went into our games, it was easy. It was very easy, <laughs> and we completely dominated them in the scrum, which they, they didn't like, first of all. And second, no, I can imagine. the game for us. Yeah, but we you also had a, a, a brilliant back line in 74. You know, I mentioned 71, but we also had a brilliant back line in 74. We had Phil Bennett, of course, instead of Barry John. We had well, Mike Gibson did the play in, in, the, in the test games because he came out late. But we had Ian McGeegan, uh, and we had uh, Dick Milligan. And then we had Andy Irvine on one wing and we had JJ on the other wing. And JPR was still a fullback. So, you know, it was still a brilliant backline. And, you know, the remarkable thing in 74 is we scored more tries and more points in that tour than we did in New Zealand. Well, that's but, amazing. I mean, they say that they, they, the only they difference say... was it was played. They say that forwards decide who wins games and the backs decide uh, by how much. And that's probably true still to, to some extent today. But one of the important things about successful Lions tours is leadership and captaincy. And, you know, from your point of view, you know, you remind me that, well, I, I suppose a, a, a mini, a mini Willie John McBride is a bit like Martin Johnson. You need someone up front leading from the front. So who do you think the contenders are? to be captain? I mean, yeah, would you think it would be a good idea to have a captain in the pack like a Maratoji or an Alwyn Jones rather than, say, someone like Owen Farrell in the back? Do you think it's important that the captain is up front? I, I think it is. And, and you know, the, the great thing was in, in, when Martin Johnson was captain, you know, he was a big man who, when he walked onto the field in, in South Africa, yeah. you know, he, people sort of looked up and said, my God, you know, he's a big man. Uh, and I think that, that psychologically was something to add. You know, and the other thing, which is a very vital and vitally important, in 1971 and 1974, I don't know, it's the coach now who probably picked the team. But on those, those two tours, there was a lot of thought 
who went into who was actually selected. Who yeah. were the people who were in New Zealand and who were the people who would go to South Africa and be fit to take on the Springboks or the old guys physically. And there was a lot of thought and preparation put into that, and that was vital. And there's a lot of thought going into it. And Warren Gatland has had great success with Lions in the past. And, um, you know, he, he will obviously, he, he will be great leader from the front. But he, he hasn't picked his team around him, his coaching team around him. But um, there's talks of perhaps other coaches from New Zealand joining it. But, you know, from your point of view, it'd be great to see, you know, English, Irish, Scottish, Welsh uh, coaches joining the team who know all the players, wouldn't you say? Yes, you see, I have a thing about this. Uh, you know, if, if you're English, it should be English blood that's pumping through you. If you're Irish, it should be Irish blood that's pumping through you. I have a thing about all this. And when you go to New Zealand or South Africa, you know, it should be British stuff. British stuff. There are all sorts of people who play. We had a crazy situation where somebody was injured in, in Australia and uh, they were playing a test match and they picked a guy who was there on holiday because it was easy. He actually tried to play for Ulster. He wasn't very good. I can't remember his name. But he was actually picked on the Lions team. And, you know, he must be selected on merit. It's the only way. Yeah. I think it might have been Andy Nichol, was it? He was the he was a scrum oh. half or something. And he was oh, in no, Australia. No, and he joined... Prop he, he, it was a right, prop oh, forward. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. prop forward. Right. Yeah, yeah. And it has happened in the past with that. But... Um, but yeah, the Lions is just so special, and um, you know, I think, I think. Do you do you think though, with the players um, that we have in, in you know in the nation, home nations, that that we can beat the world champions? What would you what What do of you think? We can. With, with 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 the thought and preparation, there is no reason why we can't. But yeah, uh, because we we have good, we have excellent players. But it's a matter of getting everything right, getting it together, and you know, mentally. You know, do we have still this block that, you know, we hope to win instead of go to win? Uh, because, you know, we went in 74, we only went with one thing in mind, and that was to win the test series. We actually went better than that. We ended up on the beat, which was absolutely staggering. To win which was uh, absolutely unbelievable. Unbelievable. Absolutely. And I was, and, and what a really great country. What a We had guys who, who fought for each other, who would have died for each other. They would have died for me as a captain, they would have died for the coach, and they would have died for the game. Uh, and they believed. You know, there's one word in, in this game, believe. You must believe that you're going to win. If you don't believe, you're not going to win. And would you say, would you you say of all believe. the tours you've been on with the Lions, would you say South Africa itself is probably the most special of all of them? Um, because, because of the diversity, because of the country, because of, you know, you talk about going out on, you know, you know out on the safari and it's just an amazing country to visit, isn't it? It is. It is an amazing country to visit. And, you know, I was unfortunate in, in the tours that I did in New Zealand because it's obviously a winter time. It's winter time in South Africa, but their winters are nothing. Like the winters yeah. in New Zealand, and I remember in New Zealand, we played in games with muck, pure muck. You yeah. know, you went into a line out, you couldn't see your boots, you know. <laughs> it's yeah. absolutely amazing. But uh, just the diversity of South Africa, it, it really terrific. And of course, the game was played at 100 miles an hour in South Africa. And just, just, just finally, um, um, just want to finish off asking your thoughts about Ireland at the moment. Obviously, in the Six Nations, we have to finish off the Six Nations. Um, you know, Leinster and Munster, you know, doing very well in the in Europe. They've got their um, matches coming up, which are very important for them. But Irish rugby at the moment, you're quite happy the way it's uh, steering along. Well, you see, I I come from the old amateur world. Yeah. And you know, one of the things, yeah. the, rugby, the Irish Rugby Union have got a lot of things right. And they've got their system right and that they own the players. And they can do well with the players whatever they like. The sad thing for me is that our grassroots have disappeared, are virtually disappearing. My own club, which and we won the All Ireland Championship, and not too distant past, it's, it's way down now in the fourth division. And you know, our, our club, our basic clubs, disappearing altogether and indeed good clubs which turned out really six or seven teams because it's a community thing uh yeah those uh, my club is not only turning out teams which we're lucky enough 
but uh, the, the professional world in Ireland is quite good, but the, the grassroots is disappearing, which is very sad. I think you'll find that all over the world now. It's it's they they are finding it hard. I often wonder sometimes. You know, I would love to look down in ten years' time and see where we are. You know. Yeah, and and um, but 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 lastly, um, so you think uh, you think the Lions are going to win this tour in South Africa, and uh, you think it's going to be another special tour? I doubt they'll replicate. What happened? Uh, that what you guys did in in seventy four, which was amazing. But um, just finally to finish off, you think what? What's your prediction for the Lions in twenty twenty? I I, uh, I honestly think they're going to have a very tough tour uh, because there's a lot of things to be played here before they leave, uh, and they're going out there. And uh, South Africa, in many ways, will be fresher than we are because we've come through a season. And they're yeah. only sort of fell into their season. So that's part of it as well. But they will be prepared. They will be absolutely prepared and ready for us. Uh, it's going to be a tough tour. But I just hope that we do have the players and we do have the preparation that can beat them. So well, we if they leave, psychologically, we have to be on top of it. Well, if they can take anything out from your words and look at the history uh, of what you've I, done. I, I, I think it could be 2-1. Let's say 2-1. If we win two, the first one. test, I think we could win the season. I think, I think that's the key. Listen, Willie, thanks for your time. Much appreciated. Uh, huge, admirer, huge admirer of your career and uh, thanks for your time for the podcast. Cheers. Thank you very much. I must thank Cameron. My granddaughter, otherwise we wouldn't have been doing it. Yeah, she got it all working. Absolutely brilliant. Well done.